What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the Praise Podcast. My name is Eric Lyde. I have the pleasure of hosting this podcast each and every time we release an episode. And of course, I don't do it alone. No, 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 not alone, but with the co-host above every other co-host. Yes, that is the Brooke Paninski. She's in the house, and uh, we are excited for today. We have got uh, kind of a new, we've got a new challenge coming for you that we're going to tell you about here in a little bit, a, a way that you can... Um, you can join Brooke and I as we uh, take a Bible journey. We'll tell you about that here in a little bit, but we want to go ahead and prep your mind for what's to come. And uh, yeah, we're, we're really, really excited and really looking forward to what this is going to look like. Of course, we're going to do a song spotlight here in just a second. But before we get to all that, we want to just say thank you all for listening. You are the best. Um, when you guys tune in, you send emails, um, you're so encouraging. And we just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing this podcast for all of you that leave ratings and reviews uh you know you know we love you you know that you're our people because you know you're taking the time to re- leave those ratings and reviews and yes again we acknowledge all of those of you that listen on the website who who so desperately bad want to leave that rating and review but who can't. desperately bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just so 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 bad want to do that but you just can't and we recognize oh. you as well and so maybe one day there will be a way for you to do that, but you know, it's not today. It's not today. And in the (laughs) meantime, again, you can always just, you know, like share this on Facebook or your Instagram or something and say how great it is there. And that would more than suffice. That would be great. So Brooke, what's up? Hey, what's up? Oh, you know, (laughs) we're just, we're just hanging out. Uh, Mondays at work are my new favorite thing. Yeah. So we're recording this the day it's coming out just per the way our schedules have been. Um, but usually we're off on Mondays and then today I got to come in this morning and now all of a sudden it's one thirty. It's the way it works. <laughs> but um I just I get so much done when no one is here. Yeah. And like it's just like nitty gritty stuff I need to get my brain wrapped around. So then that way tomorrow like when it's when just everyone like is when here. everyone is here and it's like game on for the week. It's just like the race till the weekend is started. I feel less busy in my mind. Be, when I work on Mondays. Yeah. So. I get it. Yeah. Anyways, I get it. that's what's up. Hey, let's do a song spotlight. You want to go first or me? I think you should go first. Okay, I'll go first. I love going first. That's why I said it. <sighs> yeah. And that's why you're like in the last shall be first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. My song spotlight is What a God by, is it SEU? I forget yeah. what it's actually called. That's yeah, SEU Worship. Um but I, I've been stuck on this bridge, and it's, I'm going to read it. But it says, if the highest place I reached is at your feet, then I've done it all. If the best thing that I've seen is your glory, then I've seen it all. Your love has saved my life, forever satisfied. God, you are my everything. If one word is the only thing you speak, then I've heard it all. If I feel your heart and never see your hand, I still have it all. No treasure of this life could ever satisfy. God, you are my everything. And um, then the chorus is literally just like, what a God, what a God. I love this song right now. It's so catchy. It's such a journey melodically for sure. But I just love the posture of it because it is good for me. Like I'm a person who's always like thinking about, you know, even if I, like what I'm currently doing in, in, in goals or just to-do lists or plans or schedules or whatever, like even if I'm doing something right now in the moment and it's good and it's great and I'm accomplishing it, like I'm also simultaneously thinking about like two more goals down the road that then I'm just, as there's almost like a spirit of discontentment that I wrestle with when it comes just in my brain with things. I'm just like already on to the next thing. And so there's something really cool about that song that like almost when I sing it and hear it, like it forces me to just find this like contentment and just like him, despite everything else. And then like to, to say the words like, Oh, what is, hold on. Let me pull it back up. Um, when it's talking about, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is live. This is live. Yeah, if I feel your heart and never see your hand, I still have it all. That's the line I think that gets me the most. No treasure of this life could ever satisfy. Um, I just think that's so good. If I feel your heart and never see your hand, I still have it all. Yeah, I don't. There's just such a, a glorious like feel of contentment with that. 
Um, and also in the just like knowing that like nothing ever satisfies like God can, you know, which I think is just super great. So anyways, that's my, that's my song spotlight. <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> that made me think of, so the other Friday mm-hmm. during rehearsal, we were talking to Gracie, who's our intern. Yeah. Sweet Gracie. And I don't really remember the context of the conversation, but somehow, and I don't, I mean, I guess she's not totally wrong, but somehow she labeled me as like the task oriented goal minded get it done person which isn't completely wrong no it's not wrong but like she said that like you were not that and i was like i don't like, yeah I don't, she kind of is i don't know about that <laughs> gracie just loves me so she sees yeah, me with so she probably, a different lens yeah. <laughs> she's more gracie has a lot of grace for me which i really love don't we all yeah yeah for sure but no i yeah it's I mean, I definitely feel like contentment is easier for me to find. Because it's like in like in a moment of just in that song, I'm like, okay, like I get it. I hear you. I'm there. Like I'm working. And then, I mean, granted, quickly I'll be distracted by like the next thing or whatever. But it's like it's not hard for me to just come back to that spot and be like, okay, literally none of this matters except for you, you know. And to get that check in my spirit and be like, okay, like none of it matters <laughs> other than you. And so, yeah, I mean, I do I, – I, I, that's can good. You, can you pat yourself back, you know? Yeah, is that allowed? Is, yeah. Because I, I mean, that is not easy for me, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. It's easy so. for me to leave it, but it's easy for me to come right back to it. Yeah, so it's it kind of like, me, man. It takes me a while. <laughs> I don't know if it's good or bad, but like, it's, yeah, it's a quick shift sometimes. Yeah. Either way, but I just love that song, so. I can quick shift to leave. For sure. It takes me a while to come back. <laughs> it's I'm okay. Not, yeah. I bet there are way more people who agree slash relate to that than oh, you'd think. So. Join the club, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> What's your song? All right. So my song is a song that has boggled my mind. Oh, Brooke. no. You know, oh, you know I know what it is. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. It yeah, it has. So... Let's talk. About I don't know it. that I. I don't. I don't know if I like it yet or not. But it's it's the song that I've been listening to. Yeah. A lot because yeah. I just I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. And uh, so elevation. We came, do need to address it. Let's talk about it. Let's elevation go. came out with a new album <laughs> called uh, "When When Wind, Wind Meets, Meets Fire. Fire." Yeah. Okay. And uh, I don't know. At some point, maybe I, I be, I've listened to a lot of the album. It's fine. Um, it definitely is not my favorite elevation album. That's for sure. Um, which again, in these moments, just always feels so harsh and mean. It's like we're talking about, like, you know, yeah, God inspired, God inspired worship music, and and by and a group like, of people who have made, created, produced, and yeah. put out more music than we ever could. Yeah, so. well, that's fine. I still get to have an opinion. <laughs> that you do. Yeah. <laughs> that you have. That I have. But I mean, it's 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 fine. It's a it's not a bad album. Mm-hmm. It's just. So far, as far as connecting to me sure. as it goes, mm-hmm. it's fine. Okay. But this song, mm-hmm. this song is different. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't decide if it's spooky. I can't decide if it's creative. <laughs> I can't decide Just busting if it's down good. boundaries left and right. I mean, like, yeah. it's got, like, this weird, like, I don't know. You just have, so the song that I'm talking mm-hmm. about is the, the title track song is mm-hmm. when, when Wind Meets Fire. Mm-hmm. And... Lyrically, I think I like it. Like I, I like the it's the beginning and the end are just kind of odd. And they're almost just they give me a weird feeling. Like it's almost spooky. Like it's almost scary. It's, the sound of it is just it's not it is just like it 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 catches you off guard because it's like no one else has done it. Yeah, well like, honestly it's it, it makes here's and here's and I hate to go here. Oh gosh. I hate to go here, but what? like it like the beginning makes me feel like some like one of Taylor Swift's spooky songs that she does. You know <laughs> what? Like it just has that feel of like Taylor wh- Swift spooky of, songs. Yeah, yeah, she has a couple <laughs> spooky songs. Oh my gosh! And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where to land with it. I mean, I think. I think there are people who really love it and who think it's innovated, and I definitely yeah, think there I mean, are people it, oh, who are like, it's innovative. I didn't see it coming. It's not predictable. I'm not used to it, yeah. and I'm scared. Like yeah. I could, it can go no, both ways. Well, and I don't. It's not the un. It's not the unusualness of it. It's just I don't know. It just the like the middle of the song. Great, I love. Yeah, like I'm all in on that. The yeah. beginning and the end, just like they build a weird tension inside of me that I don't know. It makes me feel funny, and, and it's then, not like a like, oh, I'm being convicted by the holy spirit it's more of like 
should I be listening? Like, what what is happening? <laughs> Don't you <know>? say that. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, it's, but you know what? Just like side note, not agreeing or disagreeing with you, just side note. But like when the Lord comes back, I wonder how many people will think it's spooky. Because oh, that's going to be terrifying. It's going to be like absolutely <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. Nothing like no. we've ever seen or yeah. heard or predicted, no. and we're not going to know what to do. And just yeah. in like his holiness, we're also petrified. Yeah, like I mean, fear of the Lord is real. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying like we should live in fear about it, but yeah, it's, I mean. It's going to be something crazy. Yeah. If, 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 yeah. if you generally are like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's not going to be, that's not going to mm-hmm. be a little terrifying, you're, you're lying. I mean, and when it says every tongue will confess, every knee will bow, I'm like, there's a reason. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to be that scared. It's yeah. not going to matter. <laughs> they're going to yeah. be like, holy cow, he is who he says that he is. I mean. And people don't even know him will know him. That's what's crazy. Yeah. Okay. I don't know that's biblical. Sorry. Well, <laughs> Retract. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> But yeah, so anyways, when wind meets fire, it's it's a good song. Mm-hmm. It's just different. I it don't is know. different. I don't know. Yeah, but if I, you, I like you, it. If you want to know what we're talking about, if if, if you want to be like, what does Eric mean by spooky? You need to go listen to it yeah. and then email us like what you think about this, yeah. like the spooky, <laughs> the spookiness. It's the key change. It's like it's this, this, like it's like, like this eerie dissonant key. Yeah. beginning. Yeah. And it's then so it, but then it goes to this it's key loud. change, and yeah. then it's like for the next six minutes, it's, it's just a, it's just awesome. Yeah, and then but it, then goes, it back like down. goes back to this like yeah. dissonant little key it change. Just, I and feel then, like breaks all melodic rules. I don't understand. It just yeah. it's confusing to me. Yeah. But I mean, like, good for them, you yeah, know. Like, not them. hating. Like, no, I'm thankful no, I'm for not, their music yeah. and their creativity. And Absolutely. I love Tiffany for sure. Yeah. Who's the brown headed girl? That's uh, like real tan. And she's just like beautiful and sings so well. That who's also know. with them all the time. Oh, that's the uh, Bur- Bur- uh, I don't know how to say her last name. Barry Barryentis. Uh, what's her? Well, what's her first name? Uh, Is it easier to say uh, than that? I think it's. Well, th- so there's um, Jenna. I don't she's know. She's married to Johnsel. So Johnsel's the other guy that's on there a lot. Okay. They're married. Is that the? T- Is he also like tan, dark haired, beard? Or is that not who that is? I just don't know any yellow Asian people. A, I don't know if he has a beard or not. But other than, I mean, other he, than. He's the guy that's not Chris. <laughs> Chris and she's is the, the main girl guy. that's not Tiffany. Okay, th- exactly. Which I'm sure they would love being, <laughs> being, being identified as that okay, way. Okay, boy. Yeah. That's, I would never want to hear this conversation. <laughs> Good thing they probably oh, won't. But then you're right. just like. <laughs> no I get hate, it though. People are like, I mean, I get it. <laughs> All the time, you know. It's so I funny. It. It's like people are like, "That's it's the guy that sings. It's not John." So <laughs> yeah, you're like, that's me. Yeah, that's I'm Eric. Me. That's me. That's here I am. Oh my so. gosh. Okay, can we go to something more meaningful yeah. and fruitful than yeah. that? <laughs> what do you want to talk about today? Uh, okay, so we want to invite you all on a journey. Because I bet adventure. that's what they want to do now yeah. after, after that. Go on a journey with us. Oh man. Uh, it's it's been a day. It's a journey nonetheless. It's a journey nonetheless. Tell them about wanna, it. All right. So, um, long story short, we are not like verse by verse, chapter by chapter on this podcast. But mm-hmm. over the next several bit, um, we are working. <laughs> ah, it's Monday, Brooke. Give me a break. <laughs> okay. Sorry, English. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right. So yesterday was Sunday. Okay. We had. I don't even know three oh, with two services yesterday. Okay, mm-hmm. then we we we're leading at Orchardville mm-hmm. at their middle school camp, which is such an which honor. we love mm-hmm. going there. It's yeah. a, it's a blast. But so mm-hmm. then we went we left at like two thirty to mm-hmm. go to Orchardville. We had to learn two new songs for the camp, which is a were great an, idea, <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> which great were an adventure. Planning. So we had like a two hour rehearsal yesterday at Orchardville. As we're trying, mainly uh-huh. me yeah. is trying to for learn. Sure. Um, everybody else was. Great. Very prepared and ready to go. And we so we get home at like ten. Yeah, and so then so day. then we did we did two hour rehearsal there oh and then we goodness. did service. service. So we did another service last yeah. yesterday night. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yesterday night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, today we come I don't to you, know. like yeah. really disillusioned yeah. because we're supposed to be off on Mondays. Yeah. And, and we just we're, can't afford and we to go be back, right now. And we go back. Anyways, tonight. So you sorry. Just I just feel like people. I need to, because right now they think I'm drunk. <laughs> they think I've been drinking, Brooke. And I need to feel, I feel like I need to explain. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, holy smokes. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so anyways... Ah, oh, exhaustion Compo- comes out composure. in silliness. Yeah, <laughs> composure. for sure. We're All sorry. Right. So what we're doing is actually really exciting. Yeah. So we are going. We are going to read through the entire 
New Testament. Yeah, we are. Okay. <laughs> and so um, basically how this is going to work is, is that's what we're doing. We mm-hmm. are, we are going to read through the entire New Testament. And as we started doing this, we are like, hey, one of the great things about doing this is, is this would be a really just beneficial and great thing to do as far as the podcast goes. Yeah, because the conversations that will, st- I mean, from the beginning of Praise Podcast, we always just joke like these are conversations we have just every day um, and thoughts are, you know, just things that come up or whatever. And I mean, obviously, when you're talking about the Bible, you're reading two chapters of the Gospels, or at least right now, we're in Matthew, duh, we just started, but, um, like, even just reading two chapters a day in the Gospel, like, there's so much to talk about, and so I do think, like, it's going to be so fun to have, you know, just to see, like, the conversations that the Lord brings um, to the table, like, and just being in His Word, and the thoughts that come from that, and um, and it's something kind of cool and encouraging. And I do feel like when people get in like a dry spell and just like, am I hearing from God? Or I don't even know how to, I don't, can't come up with the Devo or I don't really have an interesting thought or I'm not really, you know, whatever. And I think it's kind of cool because just what the word of God really is so alive and active. And I, it's kind of cool because I've read through Matthew before and in my Bible that I've had since college, I have so many notes already in the first six to eight chapters of Matthew. And it was interesting because for one of them, like I had the exact, like the same exact like thought when I read something like years ago when I was in college that I did just like yesterday when I was reading it, which I thought that was cool. But then it's also wild how like I read the same thing again today in this season of my life that like years ago when I started, you know, read it for the first time, whatever, like I did not have that thought. It didn't spark that thought that it did. And it's just so cool that you can come back to the same piece of scripture again and again and again, and the Lord reveals something new to you um, or to bring forth like an idea that he already has, um, which I just think is really cool. So I do think like it'll be a really great like source of conversation and um, talking points and sharing points, just diving into the word um, as the word is not really a devotional and not really like any other book. Like it's just the book, Mm -hmm. you know, and then the thoughts that and questions, even that kind of can stir from that in real time and real conversation will be pretty cool. So I'm excited to see how that all plays out. Yeah. So what that will look like or what it looks like right now, at least Mm -hmm. is we're doing basically, and we, I mean, we're three days in. So I mean, like when we say, and it, it is Monday, July 15th, so I will date it. And that is the current date mm. of, so, I mean, we are, we are three days in and, uh, we're, we're basically, we're reading two chapters a day. So, um, we have read through Matthew six. So you guys are really not that far behind if you want to, um, if you're going to kind of keep up, but our plan is to read two chapters a day until we get, um, through all the way. And like I said, I, we're not necessarily like committing that every podcast episode is going because obviously as you all know because you're faithful listeners that we do this every two weeks and so you know we're not going to try to catch up with what let's see what would that be like 28 books or 28 chapters of the bible um podcast episode but uh it will definitely spur conversations that we will have on here so if you want to be able to better keep up with those then uh we would really just challenge you and invite you to join us in this because I think it's going to be really great. And yeah. so, yeah. um, so that's the plan. So again, it's Monday, July 15th and you can jump in now, mm-hmm. uh, and basically read the first six chapters of mm-hmm. Matthew. And then guess what? You're caught up with us. So. Yeah. And I'm using the Bible plan app. Um, there's Eric found it, but you're not even using it, even though you found it, I'm using it, but it's <laughs> well, the, mainly, I just wanted to see how much you needed to read a day. Yeah. But I'm actually using to, the app. It's yeah. great. And so it's a, so it's in, it's done by it's each one is broken down by four quarters. Um, but this one is just like first quarter daily new Testament is what it's called. And it's LCBC church, um, which is lives changed by Christ church, apparently um, with multiple lo- lo- it says locations throughout Pennsylvania. And then Great. it's Jason. <laughs> Jason <laughs> Thank you for that information. What's it say? It says Jason Mitchell um, and the, whoever that is. And there's yeah, 23 just, whole locations. So, I mean, to me, wow. I'm saying that because it's like this guy in his church probably is pretty legit. Yeah. So they've got a, the fact that they've got a study on the Bible app is pretty cool. But, I mean, when you have 23 other churches, and it's like that's good fruit. So, I mean, yeah. I'm saying that to, like, legitify this uh, legit- plan. Legitimize. Legitimize. Yeah, that's for sure. Legitimize. <laughs> 
Yeah, that felt good, didn't it? <laughs> oh, man, that doesn't happen very often at all. That did feel good. I okay, needed that. Okay, next. I do needed you wanna that. Just all right, so let's, so let's do this, let's just, just to give them a taste. Do you want to do one and two? Or, like, what came from one and two? Or, like, uh, just what were you sure. going to do? Sure. Um, or in general Yeah, let's so just, far. let's just, for, in general. So, like okay. I said, we've, um, and w- basically what we're doing is we're just trying to take some notes as we, yeah. as we go through what are, what are the things that stand out, what, um, you know, those sort of things. So, you want to, like, mm-hmm. from one and two. Yeah. Give, hit a couple highlights. So, for Matthew 1, the first thing that, um, came to mind when I was reading that was woven lineage. And it was really cool because I remember as it started out, um, it's, it's listing, it's listing the lineage of Jesus. And it's, and I, I forget the exact words that, or wording that they used. Um, let me see. Uh, I didn't write it down. Of course I didn't. But it was cool because they they basically were saying like the Old Testament, like the New Testament was like um, all about Jesus's ministry. But it was talking about how the Old Testament was written um, again, talked about its coming. But like there's so much that's in the Old Testament that then like they go back to in the New Testament that solidifies that he is the Messiah. And that that almost like just um proves I guess like that Jesus is who he says that he is kind of a situation and again they said that much more adequately than I did um but I just thought that's so cool because you look back at like the lineage of Jesus even in the Old Testament and from then to when we have Jesus like the woven history even within that and I remember there was like some sermon I was listening to forever ago and it was talking about how even in the lineage of Jesus that there was um like proof woven in that of the story of Jesus. And so I went to see like what the like summary of that was. Um, and I just think it's so cool. So I don't know how to say any of these names. So I probably, please don't, don't be mad. Um, but like, it's cool because even from, it goes from Adam to all the way to Noah. And then it basically says what may appear as an insignificant list of names, because this is the first thing you read in Matthew 1. Um, it becomes an incredible picture of the gospel of Christ. So when you go through and you like have names like Adam, which means man, and Seth, which the meaning of his name means appointed, um, and, and so on and so forth. And it talks about um, all the way to Noah, the last one saying like comfort. Noah's name means comfort and rest. Um, so then it, when it takes like then when you read it for the what how then. Oh, my gosh. Instead of just reading it as, like, the list of names and you see it and read it as in what the names each mean, it says, man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort rest. That's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's literally the story of Jesus, but spoken in its initial lineage AKA also in the Old Testament, which is just so cool. It's so cool. So that was probably my first like big, like whoa moment takeaway. Um, and I love the website that I ended up finding that on. Um, it had continued to say when you read the meaning of the names as it would have been understood to a Hebrew listening um, to the genealogy, you see how God, even at the very beginning, uh, weaved a picture of the coming Messiah even into the names and lineage of the first 10 people through whom that coming Christ would be birthed through. Um, and speaking of lineage, the other note I had um, was the redemption in lineage, which is so cool because that's just Jesus anyways. But the fact that he would have such a redemption story in um, Rahab and even Bathsheba mm-hmm. listed and in, in called out by name in his lineage was just crazy. I mean, like, I, I don't know if you know the story of Rahab and Bathsheba. Um, I mean, it just like, and, 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 and it says, the Bible says, it, it says whose mother was Rahab. So it doesn't even say anything about who Rahab was, what she did, anything like that. It was just whose mother was Rahab. And then it goes on to say, um, um, David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba, the widow of, is it Uriah? Mm-hmm. Is saying that right? So it doesn't even talk about anything crazy that happened between Bathsheba and David. It was 
when they're talking about who Bathsheba was, it was in a redemptive way. It said, whose mother was Bathsheba, the widow of Uriah. And I was just like, mind blown by that. I just thought, in God's kindness, that's how, and yeah, I just thought that was so cool. Mm-hmm. So anyways, those are my first two, first two thoughts about Matthew 1. It's good stuff. It's great stuff. Um, mine in, in, in one and two was, uh, for sure, Joseph. Yes. Um, I had some about Joseph as well. Joseph, just his, uh, I don't know, you know, and then think about with Joseph, the idea that God honors integrity, um, you know, your social position is of little importance when God chooses to use us, um, which I think is, um, of something for all of us to be reminded of, um, being this one I thought was interesting. Being obedient to guidance from God leads to more guidance from Him, which I thought was was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then feelings are not an accurate measure of rightness or wrongness of an action, as well. Um, yeah. Like when thinking about like his initial feelings, you know, about Mary when he found out mm-hmm. were you know. Basically, just they're not an accurate measure. I thought that that was interesting. And then probably the other part um, with with that whole section there was just the dreams portion, mm-hmm. um, just the way that God uses dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, specifically with Joseph, he did a lot. But then you know, you see the wise men as well. You know, mm-hmm. that he's he's delivering messages through dreams. Mm-hmm. I thought is um, just was. I mean, I've like I said, we've read this before, mm-hmm. but just something that. And every uh, Christmas caught. we're talking about yeah. Mary and Joseph, <laughs> yeah. you know, but yeah, but it yeah. was just it, this the the dreams portion really stuck mm-hmm. out, you know how just the the fact you know there are five different times mm-hmm. just in that chapter that it talks about you know him basically giving a message through a dream, mm-hmm. so yeah, and then I love that so they were given a dream, and then um. Like you also said, like there was like quick obedience there. Did you say quick obedience, or was um, that my notes? Well, no, what did you, was, but you said yeah, being obedience obedient to guidance l- leads, leads to more. Leads to more, yeah. yeah. And so, but and so then quick obedience. Yeah. Like there's a part in the scripture where it's talking about after Jesus is born and King is a Herod. Am I yep. remembering that right? Mm-hmm. Like that he, I mean, he's a bad dude, and he. Um, was intimidated by that and did not like that. And he, um, which this is also a side note, but like King Herod, Holy Spirit, help me. So when you read, and this is in like maybe even like the next chapter, maybe it's two. Yeah, in chapter two, like King Herod was unfamiliar with the scriptures. He was unfamiliar with the depth of, of the coming of the savior like he was not familiar with it i think maybe possibly cultured like he he heard about it he knows the gist of things you know but he doesn't know because then when he finds out that jesus is born the bible says that he calls upon like those like religious leaders and the what does he say um the leading priests and teachers because he didn't know himself so he literally had to like call in for all these other people to ask this question of like, who is this Jesus or where was he to be born or whatever? And, and anyways, and, and because of all that and the, the, it was the whole thing where he had um, then called, you know, his people, his men to go and kill boys who are the age of two or younger. Um, and, and that's a whole other thing, too. Um, but I just thought, oh, holy cow. But, like, to have the dream, though, that God gave the dream to Joseph to, like, wake up and to leave um, and then to even say, like, they're going to come to kill him. And the fact that Jesus, or Joseph woke up and then immediately obeyed the prompting and the vo- like, and, and the knowledge that came, the wisdom that came through a dream. And then he, o- and not like it was crazy. You know what I mean? He just, he knew it was from the Lord and then he obeyed. And it, the Bible says, um, like, that he got up and he went or whatever. Like, so to me, when I read that, I mean, he immediately did. Like, he was like, okay, like, I heard from the Lord. This is what he said. So we're going to get up and we're going to go. Um, and I thought that was really interesting, too. Yeah. Do you want to hit three and four? Um, you can. Just go for it. on that. Go for it. Um, so then in three and four, oh, let's see here. Verse eight. In, I believe that was three, prove by the way 
you live, live. that mm-hmm. you have repented of your sins and mm-hmm. turned to God. Um, basically, you will and can know by the fruit, which he talks about. And I don't know, that was um, interesting. Uh, an interesting note as I was reading through some commentaries was, you know, as so three is where he, three and four, he's calling, you know, basically disciples. Mm-hmm. Um, to be baptized. Peter, Peter and... Or he's uh, getting baptized. Yeah, he four is he's getting baptized. You know, John mm-hmm. the Baptist, and mm-hmm. um, but um, yeah. So sorry, three is that. Mm-hmm. My bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the idea is he's calling. You know, he's starting to calling his disciples. It's just the idea that you know, like in those days, typically, you know, people would choose the rabbi that they followed. Mm-hmm. You know, but in Jesus fashion, like he was choosing the people that were going to follow oh, him, him, you know, yeah. at least closely. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that was, that's just an interesting note. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I liked that, you know, the, the idea that crowds of sick people, diseased people, possessed people and lame people would have been a sign that Jesus was near. Mm. Like, because as like, mm-hmm. it says, you know, that when, um, Basically, when people found out where he was, they brought all of those people to him, mm-hmm. um, you know, to be healed or or, or whatever. So, mm-hmm. you know, like just the idea that if you're walking along and you see crowds of sick and diseased and lame and possessed and you name it, like that would have been a sign that that Jesus was near. Where in most cases you'd be like, oh, my gosh, yeah. like, get me out of here yeah, or like intimidated on? or yeah. this is like yucky or I'm uncomfortable. And then like that being like you said, a sign that people were. Um, or that Jesus, that people knew that Jesus was near. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love that. I, I forget which part, um, it elaborated. It was like, so in the Bible app that I have that I told you guys about, ours has a devotional that's like a page. And then it goes into like that chapter, um, of reading and it kind of just provides some context and maybe like a little lesson or just a perspective, um, evoking I don't know idea and one of the things that it talked about was kind of talking about Pharisees and um this would have had been like five and six or I mean wait what one two three four yeah five and six that'd been today um but they was talking about how um like in that time again religious leaders Pharisees like all these people who were knew all the laws and they would even make their own laws to make sure that they were obeying the laws of Christ and um it said that and like of course the the tension point there was then you had Jesus saying like that that was wrong basically you know like you're like you don't get it so you have all these people who are striving 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 to on the outside look like they followed all these laws and they are this way but then Jesus is calling about like the inward self and he's saying like if the inward isn't there basically and like um then the devotionals said like something along the lines of like that G, like like these people who they were pretending to be. So here we are. We have this idea when we look from like the outside looking in, like you're like, oh, like these religious leaders, these Pharisees, they must love God. They must know God. They must have everything together because like of the way that they live and the laws that they obey and the things they do or don't do. And yet like for them to have all that figured out, but yet like they're pretending and, and Jesus then calls out their inward man, their spirit self, to be like, that's what I'm after. And, like, that's what you don't have right. And I think that's the first time that, I mean, especially in the New Testament when you read, where you're like, dang, like, <laughs> he's after our hearts. Like, he really did come to do kingdom backwards than these people were used to or what they had thought or what made natural sense to them and their culture even. Um, when they met Jesus, Jesus did everything backwards. Um, and I could only imagine the tension that that caused, like when you really think about it, um, especially when this Jesus person is like who you've been waiting for, <laughs> for generations yeah. to come. And he's nothing like you thought, you know, I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that the, was the uh, today. I got, so after I read this morning and then mm-hmm. I, I don't, I like to use enduring word. That's a commentary I use a lot. Mm-hmm. So if you're, as you go through this, if you um, are looking for, you know, extra help, um, I have a study Bible, but this goes in a lot more in depth. Enduring? Um, enduring word. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but um, 
Anyway, so I was reading through that a lot, which then spurred, and of course, you know, it wouldn't be a praise podcast. You about to say something about Daryl? <laughs> yeah, yeah you are. Praise podcast. Daryl. So then after I read this morning mm-hmm. and whatever, I, I mowed. And so um, usually Daryl joins me for mowing. Yeah, he does. Um, <laughs> and so. Um, we love Daryl. And I found, I, I, I knew he had this because I've I, I listened to a lot of different sermons. His podcast is basically just sermons, but. Um, Anyways, he's got a series he did a while back that I hadn't got to listen to, but then after the reading this morning was Beatitudes and, you know, Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. And so he did a series, uh, it's an eight-part series on the Beatitudes called People in Sync. And um, I'm through the first three sermons of that, but man, just if if you want to, um, specific Beatitudes are in five. If you want to Matthew five, so if you want a a deeper dive into those, I would highly recommend. I'm only three sermons in mm. of the eight, but um, yeah, it was just it was really good content on breaking down the the Beatitudes and um, yeah. If there's one question that you had from like the first six chapters of Matthew that you've read. Like, what would one question ha- that has, like, come for, like, what's one question that you had or that you do have that you're just, that you wondered, like, what in the world? Like, honestly, I would say it was, like, how, which, and he, I, I, of course, Daryl kind of answers this question, but it, it was literally, like, after I read, so this morning, you know, read Beatitudes and then, you know, the f- Sermon on the Mount in chapter six, and it's, like, you read all that and you get through that and you're, like, how in the world? <laughs> am I supposed to measure up to this? You know what I mean? Like how, like, like basically how, how does one do that? Like, like how does one, that's your question. That's my question. How does one do that? Like, it's like (laughs) you read all of that stuff. You know what I mean? You're like, Oh my gosh. You know, like, Mm -hmm. like I can't live up to that. Mm -hmm. Like there's no way, Mm -hmm. which, you know, in, and I don't want to dive crazy deep into this, but that is, you know, really that is the question of then, like that is the first beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit, mm-hmm. and and basically what that is is the poor in spirit is, um, yeah. it is basically the confession that I'm sinful and rebellious by nature, and I have a need. I need an utter dependence on God, and so you know, like mm-hmm. truly poor people have to beg. Mm-hmm. And, and it literally says, "God bless," because that's three. God blesses those who are poor and yeah. realize their need for Him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Yeah, and so I mean, like yeah. if you're poor. I mean, like, you know, mm-hmm. you poor people beg mm-hmm. and their reward that they get is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. it's just that I would say after the reading today, I was le- after I read six, I was like, I just don't even know if I can do this. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like when you're really yeah. reading it and you're like, I can't li- like I can't measure up to that. Like, I can't live up to that. Like, how how does one how does one follow these things? Like, I bet I've broken every one of those points on, you know what I mean? It's like, golly, that's so hard. And then, um, I don't know, then just reading through Daryl's breakdown of mm-hmm. a lot of those Beatitudes. And it's interesting, and it's it's not by accident that Jesus gives the Beatitudes um, before he, he does the Sermon on the Mount. And I think is he gives this before... Jesus gives the Beatitudes to his, I wrote this down, um, Jesus gives the Beatitudes to his disciples before going into his other teachings, basically telling them that if you're going to follow me, here's what you can expect. Um, the term disciples in this scenario, when it says like his disciples came to him, they were saying that probably alludes to like a larger crowd because we know there was a crowd there. So mm-hmm. it's not like, I think it's easy, you hear the disciples, you assume the twelve came up and sat down and then there's just this crowd of people off in the distance. But no, it, it these all would have been people that were probably following him around mm-hmm. at this time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, and I, th- I thought as a leadership note, it was very interesting too, that like by giving the Beatitudes, I, like from a leadership note, it was like Jesus sets very clear expectations for what following him is going to look like. Mm-hmm. Like, like there was no, you know, Hey, you're going to follow me, then here's the list of things, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so. Yeah, isn't that interesting, though, that people are still surprised, you know, because that's not changed, yeah. you know, for people who follow him today. But yet, you know, when so many people are both, you see it new to the faith and you see, which this kind of goes into the conversation of wilderness in just a second, but like when people are new to the faith, 
and then there's a they are baptized and then they go through trial like we see that all the time it's spiritual you know like it's it's and it's it's it shouldn't catch you off guard but so many new christians think that because i'm saved and because now i'm baptized like there is just like like there is none of that you know it's like actually there's almost more of that you know but now you're just like equipped on how to handle it and the and there's fruit that can come from it whereas like you know before you're going to go through trials and the enemy is going to use it to still kill and destroy whereas now you go through trials as a christian with you know the Holy Spirit and it's fruit that comes from it instead. And it's life and abundant and it's joy and it's peace. It's, you know, it's fruit of the spirit. Like it's all these things. And, um, but anyways, I, and I think even people who are seasoned Christians that sometimes we even f- do it for so long that we forget that it's that simple. And like, we are also, um, not excused from it either. Mm-hmm. Um, but it kind of, for my question that I had so far and, the reading that I thought seemed silly, but you're just like, but how come no one's talked about this yet? You know, or like, I mean, I've just never heard it before, but talking about the wilderness, I love talking about the wilderness. It's my favorite thing to sit and think about and to talk about because it's just like so real. And, and I, and, and, and I love manna and I love, I love the fruit of wilderness. And, um, so when we're reading that in chapter four, um, and it starts off by saying, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. And of course it makes you think of through fire because that was an intentional lyric for that. We've mentioned it a handful of times. You guys might not ever hear it, but there's like, there's a line in there that I want to be very specific. And, and I remember the morning the Lord changed it and there's a, um, and the line of the song was like, lead me to the wilderness and I'll still find you faithful. But that wasn't the original line. That wasn't the original word. And when the Lord highlighted that to me and I changed it back to lead or changed it to lead, I mean, like that changed everything because there was such an intentional thing about the Lord, like to lead us into a wilderness. Because we think we associate wilderness with abandonment. We associate wilderness or out of character from God. And wilderness isn't any of that, you know. And it, wilderness is approved by God. You know, wilderness is um, used by God. And, and, and there's fruit and manna and provision and tenderness and a, and a, and a, and a desperation that comes from wilderness that can't come from any other place. You know, we can't get those things from any other place other than the wilderness, which is why I think I like it so much. And which you hate the wilderness, you know, don't get me wrong. But I love the wilderness because I love how it makes me see him. I love how it makes me feel him. I love how it makes me understand him. I love how it reminds me of who he is. I love the posture it forces me to operate from. I love the refining that eventually comes. The whole process is miserable. (laughs) The, the, The day in, day out is so hard. But then, like, when you're out of wilderness, it's just like, oh, my goodness. Like, you wouldn't trade it for anything. And so then I just thought how interesting this it was. Again, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. He had permission to go into temptation, and he had he had the tools to be able to navigate it well to come out on the other side of it correctly and purely. And so then I, my question, all that to say then, is it says, then the devil took him to the holy city. This is verse 5. Uh, Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off for the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands. So you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded. The scriptures also say you must not test the Lord, your God. But my question is, then the devil took him to the holy city, dot, 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 dot. Why did Jesus go? <laughs> like, why did you go with the devil? Like, what, what did you, what, what was there to gain, you know? And then I just thought, of course, like, it's just funny that I'm like, well, of course you put the devil in his place, you know? Like, I just hope I'm as smart and as sassy as Jesus is, <laughs> you know? And like, I have interactions with the enemy like that. He says, and the scripture also says, because that's how the enemy can, can, talk to us sometimes and what he puts in our mind and, and the way he can come after our thoughts. And it's, and you question like, what did the word really say? What did he really say? What really is true? What do I really actually feel? Where da, 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 da. Yeah. It's just the confusion and the doubt and all these things that are not from God and are not fruitful. That is what creeps in. But it's so cool because Jesus was just, he recognized that 
filtered it, and then he came back with scripture to say, the scripture also says, and then he com- he would combat what the enemy was trying to do with truth. And I just, I don't know, I love that about mm-hmm. Jesus, and I love the lesson in that because there's so many times in the wilderness that that's what we have to do. And he just demonstrates it well. And not well, and not only did he do it once, he did it like two or three more times before the enemy left. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, there's a whole lesson there for us too that in the, in the seasons of wilderness when the enemy comes, you know, with lies, we then are equipped to practice in combating those lies with truth and then equipped to do it again and again and again sometimes before we feel the relief of when the enemy flees. Mm-hmm. I think the, the key part there too is like he understood the scripture, which is why it was effective mm-hmm. and that it worked. Because mm-hmm. like it's one thing to read it, whatever, even memorize it. Mm-hmm. But like he understood it. He believed it. He knew it. And so I think yeah. that's, I mean like, because there's a lot of people that know a lot of scripture mm-hmm. that don't understand it mm-hmm. or, or can't apply it or don't know how to apply it. But like Jesus, like it was effective for him to use scripture because... He understood it, and so I think that's a that's a key a key element of that. Mm-hmm. There's also I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but if if, you, <laughs> if other people want to go down this rabbit hole, but there is just with your question, why did he go? Mm-hmm. There is a like I don't, I'm not saying I believe this. I'm not really sure. I mean, this is deep stuff, but like there is a thought out there that like that is so like in Revelation when it talks about you know that he he bow, he binds the devil that like that is when that took place is like so that process of that temptation in the wilderness is what like in revelation talks about you know like satan was bound um there is a thought that that is so that might have been why he was going was because that was literally what he was doing like he got baptized and he's like all right now i'm gonna go take care of the devil now it's time to start my ministry because he's you know, Satan's bound. Mm-hmm. I love that. So that's, I'm saying you, I'm all I, about I'm binding not, yeah. the I'm enemy. Not, I don't have, I, oh, it's been a lot. You said my Bible degree well, doesn't cover that. No, you said I don't have a Bible degree. Yeah, I don't have one of those, but, and I don't have, I don't have my notes from all that yeah. in front of me to yeah. really but dive into, but it, it is a, it is a thought if you want to go down wow. that rabbit hole. If you, you go down the rabbit hole, you can, just email us. <laughs> yeah, you, Great you conversation. Can, but the only other thing I was going to say, yeah. and then we can wrap up, sure. I, that I think is interesting. Let's hear it. Um, one, uh, specifically talking about the opening of Jesus's ministry. So going back to mm-hmm. uh, five, mm-hmm. chapter five, Matthew. Mm-hmm. Um, back to the Beatitudes, um, there was a Charles Spurgeon quote, and I thought this was interesting. But he says, uh, you have not failed to notice that the last word of the Old Testament is curse. Some Bibles may say destruction or things mm-hmm. like that, but that the mm-hmm. Old Testament is curse. And it is suggestive that the opening sermon of our Lord's ministry commences with the word blessed. Mm. And I just think, or, or blessed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's that's an interesting um Interesting note. And then... I liked your note about the repentance. Do you remember when we were talking mm, about that? Yeah. On the way to camp? Yeah. You were like... Oh, yeah. So basically, re- would, re- repent, yeah, share repent that is the first word of the gospel. Yeah. I think that's just cool. Yeah. And so I'm like, you see John the Baptist, it's the mm-hmm. first word of, of what he would preach. Repent was the first word. Matthew 4, 17, mm-hmm. you, did you hear Jesus? Um, 12 disciples, Mark 6, 12. Um, when Jesus gave preaching instructions to his disciples after his resurrection, Luke 24, 46 and 47, that's the first thing he says there. Uh, first word of exhortation in the first Christian sermon, Acts 2.38, when Peter's talking there. And then Apostle Paul, um, first word in the mouth of Apostle Paul through his ministry, Acts 26, is, is that as well. So it's just the repentance piece mm-hmm. is obviously like that is, a, that is the key. Yeah. Um, in that, and then the last thing I thought was interesting is that um, so the word "blessed," the Greek translation for "blessed" is it, it comes out to happy, but it's not like our happiness; it's God's happiness. You know, like it's like it's 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 we know that we're in sync, that we're on it. We are doing it right when we are like when God sees us as poor in spirit, like 
happy is God when we're poor in spirit. Happy mm-hmm. is God when we're meek. Which, by mm-hmm. the way, I guess I did not know what meek meant until this morning. Do you know what meek means? I mean, I think I do, but now I'm nervous that I don't. What do you think it means? Because I guess I I, in meek- my mind, I had a different... What did you think it meant? I don't know. I just thought it was... I mean, I guess I. I guess it's... It's not... I, I don't know. I thought a meekness was like a humility, a posture of humility, but is that yeah, wrong? Yeah, no, it is. It is. That's right. Um, I don't know. I guess I just, meek in my mind, I guess like weakness was Yeah, in but there. that's what everybody thinks. Yeah, I don't know. Because you'll just... hear people say meekness is not weakness. Oh, Have you I, never heard people no, say <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we run in different circles. <laughs> uh, we do, but uh, I mean... No, I guess it's because it said like in the, so the meek in the vocabulary of the ancient Greek language, the meek person was not passive or easily pushed around. I guess in my mind, meekness was passive and agreeable, Mm. I guess is what I saw like, like meekness as. So what is it defining it as? So, okay. So in the vocabulary of the ancient Greek language, the, the meek person was not passive or easily pushed around. The main idea behind the word meek was strength under control. Mm. Like a strong stallion that was trained to do the job instead of running wild. Mm. That's and so good. to be meek means to show willingness to submit and work under that, proper authority. Humility. Yeah, I, that's, I said you yeah. weren't. Right. It also right. shows a willingness to disregard one's own mm. rights and privileges. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. is one thing for me to admit my own spiritual bankruptcy, but what if someone else does it for me? Do I react meekly? The blessed. One is meek. They are meek before God in that they submit to his will and conform to his word. They are meek before man in that they are strong, yet also humble, gentle, patient, and long-suffering. Uh, that's John Henniger to me. I think I'll have mm-hmm. to, I'll encourage him with that. Like when you said that, as I'm thinking about as a leader and someone who's like anointed, appointed, called to, mm-hmm. to surrender his wills, wants, desires, plans to the call of the Lord. If anybody knows the story of the transition of our church, when we, when John Henniger stepped in as our lead pastor, he did not even intentionally have like any interest in applying for that position. Um, and, and then now like look at what's happened because of his ministry and his obedience, because the Lord did call despite what John wanted and maybe initially like thought he would ever do, you know? Um, and, and then you, you read those adjectives again, you, uh, gentle, what is it? Humble, gentle, Humble, patient, gentle patient, long suffering, long suffering that means. is literally John Henniger as a leader. We're blessed to have him as our as our pastor, that's for sure. And the last note. Wow, that's so good. Last note was, um, I just, again, because I think it's easy as you read it to picture it this way, mm-hmm. but as a reminder, it's not, the Beatitudes are not eight different people, but they're eight different characteristics of one person. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. Which I think is. <laughs> Which is why you're like, yeah. God, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I, I left this morning's reading being like, good night. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad at this. That's really funny. But, you know, then you're also like, but first word of the gospel is repent. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> I've been I, forgiven. I, I, had, I had some <laughs> repenting to do on the mower today. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's funny. Well, that's good. We got a lot of conversations heading. Yeah. Heading so if you want to join us, so uh, you got to get through Matthew 6 so far and you're caught up. So tomorrow we'll read 7 and 8. Um, and then, like I said, we're just going basically two chapters a day for the foreseeable future. I don't really know when this should end. But, yeah, um, and then I'm not even sure if we have the discipline to actually finish it, but we're going to sure try. Uh, I think. I By we, I mean me. I for sure don't ever finish things like this that I start. I'm just being real, <laughs> but I'm really excited to try. Uh, it's fun to not start in Genesis for once, that's for sure. You talk about a book of the Bible I've read a lot. <laughs> if you know, you know. Uh, yeah, I've read Genesis a lot. Okay, uh, sign us out. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you all listening again. Share this podcast. Uh, send it to a friend. Join us. Uh, you can email us at eric at centralnow.com or brooke at centralnow.com. If, you wanna, if you're if you going to join in reading through the, the New Testament with us, let us know so we know who is, who's with us. You can uh, email. Uh, you can leave those ratings and reviews. And as always, we just appreciate you guys listening. We love you all. And let's be people in every day and every way that bring the praise. We'll see you next time.